Uh, welcome back to our analysis of uh, absolute maxima and absolute minima of functions of two variables. In the previous lecture, we had seen to analyze absolute maxima and absolute minima for a function of two variables, we need to locate uh, the critical points, uh, namely the points where uh, interior points where the function of two variable, both the partial derivatives exist and are equal to 0 or either of the partial derivative do not exist. So, those are the critical points and then look at the boundary points of the domain and find out the values of the function at all these points and compare and the largest value is the absolute maxima and the smallest value is the absolute minima of the function. Let us apply this uh, criteria to our uh, example in our uh, economics. So, consider a producer which uses L units of labor and k units of capital to produce a fun, uh, to produce an uh, product and the product function is given by q which depends on the variables k and l and is given by 12 l plus 5 k minus 0 0.2 k square minus uh, 0 0.5 l square. Uh, so, k is the capital and l is the labor and with the cost of the labor is 8 per unit, uh, each labor costs uh, 8 and each uh, capital investment is uh, 4 per unit. So, that is what is given to us and what we want to do is given that there is a, a pure competition um, that means pure competition normally in economics means, means that the price of the product is fixed. So, let us say the price of the product is fixed at 4, we want to find out the values of L and K uh, such that um, uh, the, that will maximize the profit. So, we want to maximize the profit this is the product function, this is the cost uh, uh, input. So, uh, we first we set up what is the profit function, profit is uh, cost minus, uh, uh, profit is the revenue minus the cost. So, let us find out. So, pi the profit function which is a function depending on q and l both, um, q is the uh, uh, product function. So, 4 times uh, q because the price of the product is 4. Okay. So, the revenue will be 4 q minus the cost function. So, if L is the units of labor, so 8 L plus k units of capital, so 4 k. So, that data is coming from here. So, that is 8 per unit for labor and 4 units per capital. So, this is the revenue and this is the cost. So, for q we put the value from here. So, this is 12 L plus 5 k minus 0 0.20 k minus 5 0.5 L square. So, minus 8 L minus 4 k. So, once we put that we get the profit function as a function of two variables L and k to be equal to 40 L plus 16 k minus. So, this is simplifying this is equal to uh, 40 L plus 16 k minus 0 0.8 k square minus 2 L square. So, that is a profit function. So, what we want to do? We want to maximize the profit function and then find out what is the input for the labor, what is the input for the capital and uh, what is the profit. So, this is the profit. So, differentiate this with respect to k, you get partial derivative of pi with respect to k and similarly differentiate this with respect to l, you get the partial derivative of the profit with respect to l and that gives us those two uh, partial derivatives and we put them equal to 0. So, that gives you uh, 20 minus 4 that is 16. So, that gives you k equal to 10, uh, 10 and l also equal to 10. So, when uh, input for the uh, input uh, k that is for the capital is 10 and input for the labor also is 10, then possibly uh, the function uh, profit function is maximum. To check that is the case, it is indeed a maximum we look at the second derivative test. So, second derivative of uh, pi with respect to k from here profit with respect to k is 0 0.1 minus 1.6 of this with respect to L. So, there is no L here. So, that is equal to 0 and partial derivative with respect to uh, second derivative with respect to L that is equal to minus 4. So, and from this we look at the discriminant pi k k minus pi L L minus pi square k l and that is positive. So, the discriminant is uh, positive and uh, the first derivative is negative. 
So, that means the, the function has a maximum uh, absolute maximum at the point k equal to 10 and l equal to 10. So, those are the inputs for the labor and the capital at which, which maximize the profit and the maximum profit is pi at 1010 that gives you 280. And the product function, how many product, how many things should be produced, so that is 100 products must be produced and then there will be a maximum profit of uh, 280, k is equal to 10, uh, labor input for labor is 10 and input for um, capital also is equal to 10. So, this is how you um, apply uh, the second derivative test to maximize uh, or minimize a function. Let us look at uh, one more scenario, uh, what is called the constraint maximum and the minimum. Sometimes in many practical problems, one has to find the extreme value of a function that is the maximum or the minimum uh, over the domain, but the domain of the function is constrained to lie on a particular region in space. So, there are uh, some constraints uh, put on the function. So, we are not looking at the absolute maximum and absolute minimum of the function in the given domain. Of course, in the given domain, but we are putting some restrictions on that uh, absolute maximum and absolute minimum. To illustrate uh, this uh, idea, mathematically the idea is that given a function of two variables f x y, we want to maximize or minimize it subject to some relation between x and y. So, the, that is called, uh, there is again a function of two variables mathematically and the, we write it as g x y equal to 0. So, f x y is to be maximized or minimized with a constraint g x y equal to 0. Um, there is a uh, algorithm for solving such kind of problems for 2 and 3 variables and so on. So, let me just state that algorithm and we will apply in our uh, scenario. So, the, it is called Lagrange's method of uh, constrained maxima and minima. It says the following. So, look at the function f x y and look at the function g x y equal to 0. So, look at the relations step 1 solve the equations f x x partial derivative of uh, f with respect to x and uh, uh, there is a typo here it should be lambda times partial derivative of g with respect to x. So, one equation is f x equal to lambda g x, second equation is f y lambda g y partial derivative of f with respect to y equal to lambda times partial derivative of g with respect to y and the uh, constraint g x y equal to 0. So, we get three equations, first equation is f x equal to lambda g x, f y equal to lambda g y and the third is g x y equal to 0. In these three equations, the variables to be determined are solutions to be found are x, y and lambda. So, these three can be determined from these equations. Once you have found those uh, uh, values of lambda, x and y, uh, look at the points which you get from these uh, solutions and find out the values of f at those points and compare and see which is the absolute maximum and absolute minimum. So, let me give you one example of this. A firm's weekly production is given by uh, the function, uh, product function is of capital and labor k and l and it is given by k raised to power 3 by 4, l raised to power 1 by 4. And what we want to do, we, we are also given that the unit cost of capital and labor are uh, v equal to uh, 1, this is not 4 here, this is a typo, this is uh, v equal to 1 and w equal to 5 per week. So, uh, the cost of capital is 4, uh, capital is 1 and uh, of the labor is 5. So, that is the inputs. So, find the maximum minimum cost of producing a weekly output of 5000 uh, units and the corresponding values of k and l. So, uh, we write down what is what we want to minimize. So, we want to minimize the cost function so, the cost function is for uh, input for uh, capital is 1 and the input for labor is 5. So, input is 1 times k plus 5 times l. So, we get a function of two variables that is the cost function and we want to minimize uh, the with respect to the constraint the product function is given to us. So, that is a constraint we have to obey the product function. So, the constraint is q k l equal to k raised to power 3 by 4 
and L raised to power 1 by 4 equal to phi 1. So, this is the constraint and this is the function which we want to minimize. So, as we said Lagrange's method says find out the partial derivative of C with respect to k equal to lambda times partial derivative of q with respect to k one equation. Second equation will be partial derivative of C with respect to L equal to lambda times partial derivative of q with respect to L and third equation is this constraint itself. So, let us find out these three equations. So, these three equations are a partial derivative of C with respect to k equal to lambda k and that gives you 1 is equal to 3 by 4. Uh, if you look at the right hand side uh, of the equation uh, g and differentiate the so power comes down 3 by 4 lambda k raised to power minus 1 by 4 l raised to power 1 by 4. Similarly, the partial derivative of c with respect to l is equal to uh, lambda times partial derivative of q with respect to l. So, that is the second equation that gives you 5 is equal to 1 by 4 lambda k to the power 3 by 4 l to the power minus 3 by 4. And the fourth is the constraint itself uh, that is k raised to power 3 by 4 l raised to power 1 by 4 equal to 5000. So, these three equations are to be solved for k, l and lambda which uh, can be done uh, quite easily. So, what we can do is from these two equations, so uh, uh, we, uh, we get that uh, l is equal to k by 15. Okay. So, uh, L is equal to uh, we get that uh, from these two equations you can solve them and get L is equal to k by 15. So, that is solving the equations and putting these values in the uh, function constraint function give you um, k equal to 5000 into 15. So, the basic problem is Lagrange method says solve these three equations find the value of lambda k and L. So, in our case when you solve that the values come out to be equal to k is equal to this. Once you have obtained k, we can put this value in this equation and get the value of L. So, get 1 lambda, uh, value at lambda if you want to find out lambda, <coughs> right or uh, see how from these two equations what we have done is we have found the value of lambda and equated these two. So, that gives you a relation between uh, the first two equations give you the value lambda is equal to k by 15 and this when you put it in this equation you get the value of k. So, you get the value of k and uh, from put back the value and you get the value of L. So, that gives you L is equal to k by 15 and that is equal to this value. This power, this is not minus, this is the power uh, minus 3 by 4. So, once you know what is k, what is L, uh, we know k plus L is equal to that is the minimum cost function you can put the value of k and l and get the cost function. So, that is how you find the minimum value of the cost function. So, this is what is called the Lagrange method of finding absolute maxima and absolute minima. So, uh, uh, with that uh, we can come to the conclusion of uh, this course. Let me just revise uh, um, basically what we have tried to do in this course. We looked at to begin with we looked at uh, what are the real number system and the crucial property there was the completeness property of real numbers. So, uh, that said every monotonically increasing or decreasing sequence of real numbers which is uh, if it is increasing and it is bounded above it must converge and which is uh, bounded below uh, decreasing and bounded below must converge. So, those two uh, that property completeness property we uh, uh, of real numbers is the one uh, we assume that the real numbers have that property. Uh, and then we looked at the concept of uh, what is con a function, a function is a special type of relation. So, every point in the domain gets associated with a unique value, one value does not get associated with two different values. So, we looked at the concept of a function and then we uh, analyze an important concept in calculus namely what is called the limit of a function of one variable at a point. And we uh, started with the idea that limit is the value of the function expected of it to be taken by looking at the values nearby. And for the limit, the function need not be defined at that point. Once the concept of limit is established, the value expected if it is equal to the actual value that is the continuity. We define the notion of continuity of functions of one variable. So, our limit continuity was defined 
and then we looked at uh, the notion of differentiability and differentiability of a function of one variable came from various uh, inputs. One was rate of change of a function basically from physics it gives you the, the instantaneous speed at a point of a moving particle from mathematics geometry point of view it helps you to define that notion of tangent to a curve at a point and basically in economics that gives you the marginal uh, of uh, a function. So, marginal of a function uh, is, is the derivative of the function at that point. So, that is how it gets related with the, and similarly we saw how the concept of differentiability gets related with the notion of coefficient of elasticity at a point. And then we looked at the optimization problems of functions of one variable. We looked at what is increasing, what is decreasing, uh, how what is the concept of local maximum, what is the concept of local minimum, what are the necessary conditions for local maximum, local minimum and what are the sufficient conditions for local maximum and local minimum. Necessary conditions give you possible points where the local maximum or local minimum can occur and sufficient conditions give you a way of testing which of the points are local maximum or local minimum. And then we looked at uh, in particular we looked at we also looked at uh, what is known as the convexity and concavity of a function of one variable and that was analyzing bending towards or bending away and in economics that gave you the how the marginal is changing whether the marginal is increasing or marginal is decreasing and that also gave you the notion of uh, points of inflection. And finally, all of this put together gave you how the, the tips gave you the algorithm for uh, sketching uh, the graph of a function of one variable. Once that was done, we applied the concepts to various economic uh, models and then we looked at functions of several variables, mainly functions of two variables. And we saw that uh, we can analyze various things by looking at the partial derivatives. That means, treating the in a function of two variables, treating one variable as a constant and looking at the second variable as the varying thing. So, that gave us the notion of partial derivatives and the notion of partial derivatives we mentioned they are not enough to imply continuity. That is a stronger notion of differentiability for function of two variables which we did not uh, look at. But the notion of partial derivatives gave you uh, conditions, necessary conditions for analyzing points of local and maxima and minima. And, uh, so, uh, the points if is a point interior point in the domain of the function and if it is a local maximum or a minima for a function of two variables then the necessary conditions that both the partial derivatives must be equal to 0. So, this along with the points where the function need not have partial derivatives and the boundary points are the possible points where the function can have local maxima, local minima and absolute maxima. So, they helped us to analyze. We also had uh, tests of um, local maxima minima namely the second derivative test in terms of the discriminant of the function. And finally, we looked at absolute maxima and absolute minima and uh, constrained maxima and minima and saw applications of this in various uh, situations in economics, commerce and management. So, all the best, revise the concepts. Thank you very much. <laughs>